We're over here in the bike shop and we're gonna be talking about chains. It's a chain day, there's a lot going on with chains. Sometimes they're dirty, sometimes they're clean. Um, ultimately, what we're gonna talk about today is how to clean, maintain, and ultimately protect your drivetrain. And you're gonna save some money in the process or spending some, I can't necessarily figure out which way it's gonna go. We've got a bunch of different chains in a bunch of different states that are getting ready to be treated in a bunch of different ways. That's the point. There's a bunch of different ways that you can go about treating your chain and doing what you want with what you want with it, rather, right? So, what way are you doing it? Are you waxing it? Are you just lubing it? Are you doing the bare minimum? Drop a comment. Tell me what you're doing. Like, subscribe, do all that stuff. Okay, guys. But we're gonna get into it here now. So, when you get a new chain, kind of like this, what do you end up doing with it? Do you just slap it on and put a little extra lube to get you going? Or do you end up stripping the factory lube and oils off of it and trying to optimize what you got? Either way, the most important thing is that you take care of this thing. And as an example, you've got one here that's a little dirty and another that's not so dirty as an example. And what you can kind of take away from this is that this guy over here is probably not gonna last as long as this guy over here. And that's the most important thing. So basically we're gonna get into three different ways that you can take care of your chain. From the bare minimum to what you and me kind of commonly do or most people end up doing all the way through what the World Tour pros end up doing. And we got this awesome system from Makat that we get to use. So shh, let's follow me. So if you take a closer look at what's going on inside of a bicycle chain, you'll see here that there are, are four parts. It's made out of the outer, the inner, the rollers and the pins. Being able to clean and maintain the nooks and crannies of this is what ends up giving you or providing that frictionless feeling when you're riding. So if we were to zoom in on what's going on, you'd see that this right here is the steel plate itself. If you were to go one layer deeper, you would see the crystalline structure, which is the surface of the steel itself. And in between that steel, as it connects to the next link, you have that amorphous region, the space between all of those things. That's what we want to clean. That's what we want to maintain. And that's where we want to get our lube. No bike chain is going to last forever. And it's going to end up being replaced more often than your actual cassette or chain ring for that matter. But if you don't end up cleaning it, you end up getting friction, it ends up feeling chunky. And let's actually talk about what you can do with your chains, starting with the bare minimum. It kind of starts with washing your bike. And if you're gonna wash your bike, you might as well clean your chain while you're at it. Uh, one of my favorite things to do when I'm in a hurry is just to grab this nifty little tool. A lot of people have it, a lot of people use it. It's called a chain pig. And what ends up happening is you just put some soap, some water in here, and just turn your crank. That's all you gotta do, guys. That's the bare minimum. This will do the job. Get it, pick it up, fill it with some soap, the agitation alone is gonna get all that dirt, gunk, and debris off of your chain. Hopefully, so that you can put some lube on it next. And as you can see, I've got one lube that's uh, for extreme conditions. I've got another that's specifically for dry. I've got one that's got different additional metals in it. Some that is specific for what we're gonna talk about later. And can I get a ludicrous drop real quick? Thanks, but anyways, you get what I mean. There's tons of options out there and ultimately whatever you end up picking for whatever you ride, just make sure you hit the lube on each roller. Now that we've done the bare minimum, let's actually take it one step further, which is actually taking our chain off our bike and getting into the nooks and crannies of it. This next tip is something that I picked up from being a shop rat around the world. Everyone does it, just looks a little different depending on what part of the world you're in. Here, in this part of the world, I've got plastic. Finding an old container that you're gonna basically reuse over and over again is what we're after here. Getting some degreaser. See, this will do just fine. And what you're gonna end up wanting to do is find a ratio that works for you. For me, it's two to one. Diluting the degreaser so that it's not as strong and as active will give me the, the time and the control to ultimately get all the dirt and oil out of the chain that I want. This is what it's gonna end up looking like after hanging out there for about 24 hours. It's gonna basically start to break down all the dirt, grime, and lube that lives within your chain 
after being picked up for thousands and thousands of miles. One thing that you're gonna be super mindful is not to lose your master links. If you end up losing it, you're probably gonna have to call the bike shop or order one on Amazon for an extra five to $10. It's okay to reuse them, everyone reuses them. The thing that you wanna be mindful of is when you're going to install and take off your links, you wanna make sure that this area where the pin sits isn't degrading too much. If it is, that's when you're gonna to wanna to change it. That's your sign. So now that we have a clean and degreased chain, it's time to apply whatever lube we want to it. We're gonna go down the waxing and crock pot method. Yeah, I said wax and crock pot, guys. It's not a big deal. Let me just grab it over here. Thanks, hands. Appreciate you. This is probably gonna be the best 20 or $30, depending on where you pick it up from. It doesn't need to have a lot of functions. A simple crock pot will do the trick. The next thing that you're obviously gonna to wanna to find is a wax-based lube that'll work for you. Fortunately, we're using the secret Silka stuff, the super secret stuff. You can use the bag to apply the wax to it, but for our sake, we're gonna use the crock pot to get even coverage and apply the wax evenly throughout the whole chain. Waxing your chain is one of those things that is a not so secret secret. It's a super secret that not too many people think is a super secret, or is it a super secret? I'm not really sure what the secret is, but the secret is wax your chains. Mountain bikers and wet weather aficionados alike have been doing this for years. It's one of those things that helps you as a rider protect your chain and make sure that not even God can get between you and a clean chain. The first thing when you're starting to wax your chain is read the instructions. It's really important that you understand what's going on and what temperature you need things to be at. Silka asks that you make sure that their wax is above the boiling point anywhere between two and 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Once you drop your wax into your crock pot, give it 10, 15 minutes for it to heat up and to start melting. Once that happens, Grab your chain that's been freshly degreased and is clean, and drop it like it's hot. Guys, make sure you obviously attach your chains correctly before you do what I do. Ha! Yeah. Learn a lesson from me. You're gonna wanna grab your chain, you're gonna grab the ends of it, like so, and ultimately run a zip tie through this guy so that it's all nice and neat. It's really super easy. Just grab that zip tie, Loop it through. It's kind of like crocheting if you're into that. Here's a secret tip about me. I love to crochet, I love to knit, I love to weave. Um, so yeah, now this is ready for the wax bath, guys. Don't be like me and just throw your chain into the bath. Make sure you link it up and throw it in nice and evenly, nice and softly so that you completely get your bicycle chain submerged into this bath. And from there, what you're gonna to wanna to do is just make sure you leave it in there for 30 minutes, and every so often just casually move around that bath. I unfortunately don't have 30 minutes to waste with you, so I'ma go all Martha Stewart on you, and I've got a chain ready. Uh, Rachel Ray, eat your heart out at my presentation. This is what you're gonna want your bicycle chain to look like after it's been done, guys. It's gonna be kinda of stiff. It's not gonna to wanna to move around. It'll most likely hold its shape. If we get in closer in here, what has ended up happening is that the wax has cooled onto the, onto the surface of the chain and penetrated into the rollers and pins themselves. When you're ready to, to pull your chain out of the bath, the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is unplug your crock pot. What this is gonna do is gonna help the wax come down at a cool, progressive temperature, allowing you and the chain to cool down properly. It kinda of gets hot in here. From that point, the moment you're gonna to wanna to pull your chain out is when the surface of the wax itself starts to harden and solidify. This could happen in a matter of a few brief seconds. So being by your crock pot as this all happens, super, super duper important. Once you pull your chain out of the crock pot at that point, make sure that you go to hang it vertically and have a catch underneath of it. What this is gonna do is allow you to catch any of that excess wax and the money that you're ultimately spending so that you can throw it back into your crock pot after it's been used. Go ahead and grab yourself something to cut that zip tie or whatever was holding your bicycle chain in place and you'll see that your chain is kind of stiff and that it's gonna start cracking and flaking as you try to move 
those rollers and pins around those links. That's okay. That means you did the right thing. In about a ride or two, once you get your chain onto your bike, that wax will have softened up and will allow the lube to do its job, which is to move efficiently without getting any dirt or grime into your pins or rollers. It's gonna feel a little weird in between riding. That's because as the wax starts to break down and settle into place, what you might wanna do is apply a few drops of lube to the rollers to help you and your chain in specific riding conditions. And these are some of the lubes that ultimately you know, might get you by depending on where you're riding. Um, can I get some hands here, hands? So as an example, this is a wet. Thank you, hands. This is a dry. Oh, he, hands got it all today. This is a wax-based lube. And as an example, this is what Silka might re wanna recommend for you to use in between waxing sessions and servicing your chain. What this does ultimately is kind of the same thing as your crock pot. This is gonna help lube and penetrate your pins and rollers in between those cleaning and, and servicing sessions, really. That's a mouthful sometimes. But basically, what we're getting at here is that picking a lube for your riding condition is pretty important. Each one of these is gonna have a different weight and is gonna perform differently in a certain environment. What are you gonna do when you're waxing your chain? Are you just simply gonna degrease it and throw it in? Are you just gonna wax your chain with the natural factory lubes? Or are you gonna go through the process of degreasing your chain. Pick what works for you and work at it. But before we work on what's next, this is pretty exciting, guys. I gotta show you this. This is what the creme de la creme looks like. This is if money were no option, if you had access to whatever you wanted. This is a thing, this is a system that isn't even available to the average consumer. If you are a service course, a bike shop, or even a world tour pro team like Ineos and EF Education, these are the tanks that you use. This is how you clean your chain and it works. To kind of start with this whole process, guys, get yourself a fresh new chain. And I'm serious, fresh. Like, you're gonna crack this open. You haven't done anything to it. The reason why you're gonna want a fresh chain is these baths, treat them like they're sterile, working pieces of equipment. You don't wanna introduce any foreign contaminants that are gonna come from an old and dirty chain. There goes my master link. Fresh. Say it with me guys, fresh. So fresh and so clean. And like I said, don't lose your master links because you'll end up paying three or four dollars later on to find it. As we discussed earlier, this is like kind of a high-tech tin jar that contains your degreaser. And what I mean by that is, it's gonna use time, temperature, and emit high frequencies that are gonna shake the factory lube and oils out of your chain, getting ready to be prepped for the next stage. What you're gonna wanna do is make sure that you start with your basket, right? Throw your chain in that basket. Perfect, you've done the job, it's got a nice little home. Next, what you're gonna wanna do is take off that lid. What Muckoff recommends is that you fill this to about two thirds of the way. Ooh, hey now, I've got the little cap still on here. Right on. But now that that's done, you're gonna wanna fill this up for two thirds of the way, or at least until your chain is completely submerged. Muckoff recommends that you heat up your tank to about 30 degrees Celsius and leave your chain in there for at least 30 minutes on each side. So this process here is gonna take an hour. And once you've basically got all of those things together, go ahead and Turn your heat on, make sure that it's at the right temperature. Submerge your wire basket into the bath. Make sure you cover the lid on that guy. If I press that button, it'll end up making a ton of noise. And basically, that means that it's working. The ultrasonic frequency ends up emitting a powerful wavelength that ends up breaking down dirt, lube, and factory plastic parts that kind of come out of, the, out of the bath, rather. Once you've gone through one cycle on one side, Muckoff recommends that you run it again for a second 30 minute bath. And once that's done, you've been at it for an hour. What you're gonna wanna do at this point is go ahead and grab your wire, wire basket. And it's super handy that they include this because it keeps your chain really nice and neat and in a specific place. Go ahead and just shake off the excess that comes with it. 
take it out, set it aside, and ultimately, depending on how contaminated your bath is, you may or may not want to reuse it. At this point, this bath has been used almost four times, so it's pretty much time for a new bath. Make sure to go ahead and cover that up when you're done and take your wire basket over to the sink so you can run some fresh water through it. Once you got a degrease chain using the ultrasonic cleaner, go ahead and bring it over to your next two tanks because these guys are gonna be how you apply that lube to your chain. Each of these tanks are gonna do the same thing but use a different lube formula built for specific riding conditions. One is their Hydro 2.0, which is meant to excel in wet weather conditions. And the other is their Ludicrous, which is, as it sounds, ludicrous. Once you've decided which lube you're gonna go with, ultimately the processes are the same for wh whichever way you decide to go. Make sure that the tanks are heated up to 30 degrees Celsius and put it onto one side. Leave the chain in the tank for about 30 minutes. And once that cycle is done, take the wire basket out, flip the chain onto the other side, and throw back in for another 30 minutes. Now that we got the chain and this lube specifically, and we're gonna let it do its thing for the next hour, we're gonna go ahead and speed up time again and show you what the finished process looks like. So this is what your chain is gonna look like when it comes out of the bath. After it's been dried and after it's just sat for a little bit of time, what Muckoff wants you to do is to take your chain and with the light that's included, just make sure that the lube has penetrated and made it into the pins and rollers. Once you've made sure that the proper amount of lube has been applied throughout the chain, go ahead, take your chain, cut the zip tie, and get it onto your bike. Okay guys, now that we've gone through the whole process and talked about everything from waxing your chain to the bare minimum to doing what the world pro teams do, what are you gonna do? Which route are you gonna pick? Are you gonna just slap a chain on, run it with a rag and call it a day? Or are you gonna hit up your world tour pro friend and see if they've got this hiding in their, in the back of their service van. Don't hit me up to use these because I've got more than enough requests for it already. Uh, if you know of someone that could use this, let them know. Uh, make sure to drop a comment about what kind of lube you're using, what's your favorite, and why you're doing what you're doing. And if you know somebody that could use a benefit from this video, make sure to tag them in it as well. I'll see you guys next time. What the World Pro Tours are using. Why, why is that the World Tour Pros? World, World yeah. Tour Pros. God, being Spanish is tough, that R. Let's get this. All right. Okay.